We really wanted people to understand that activism wasn't just going to protests. Um, we needed people to get that, like, I get it. The news media is obsessed with the protests, you know, right. they want to focus on the sort of like the most exciting part. But a lot of what we're doing is like having meetings, being in conversations, developing strategy, trying to figure out what's the best, you know, next step forward. This is pretty big deal. So I'm doing my own makeup today for my Patrice Colors interview. I'm gonna start with a little bit of the Candid Glow from Revlon, the foundation. I use my hands, a little dab will do ya. Now we're gonna use the Skin Lights Sunlit Glow Bronzer. I haven't had a tan in a while, so we're just gonna kinda go ham here. Okay, so today I don't have an eyelash curler on me, which is very unconventional for moi. I feel like because I loved the So Fierce mascara so much, it's going to work in my favor today. I don't need an eyelash curler. It's kind of amazing. Okay, lips. I'm gonna use a Nude Eliminator. I like this one because it's a little bit shiny. And that's it. This is my very minimal, 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 but a little bit there makeup. Let's go. Woohoo! And a special shout out to my Revlon family. Thank you for sponsoring this episode. So on Pretty Big Deal today, we have an activist, an educator, a mother, and one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter. And she is a New York Times bestseller. Needless to say, she's definitely a pretty big deal. Thank you for coming on Patrice Colors. I'm calling Patrice. Hi! Don't you just love this era of Zoom and technology and like... It's so wild. And you look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, it's amazing that you still have this like radiant smile because you have a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. You know, we hear about the Black Lives Matter movement. We hear your name. Other people have a lot of ideas about who you are and what you represent. So I would love it if you could just tell us in your own words, who is Patrice Khan Colors? Thanks. I really see myself first and foremost as a daughter, a daughter of mm. uh, Sharice Simpson, my mother. She really taught me you know, what it means to be, to forgive people and mm. to showing up even when it's hard and difficult. She's the per first person who taught me discipline. Being a daughter really encompasses so many things because I just learned so much from that woman. Like mm. she's just a force. I have to say three women, three amazing yeah. women created Black Lives Matter. I mean, of course it took women to have to do this. Right? So tell us exactly what is Black Lives Matter. Thank you. And I, I love when people ask that question um, because Black Lives Matter honestly has been so many things. Mm -hmm. um, Black Lives Matter is about Black life mm -hmm. and it's about valuing Black human beings it's about valuing our lives, valuing how we show up in the world, and really committing um, to our dignity. And in and, and so many words, I believe that BLM is a rehumanizing project. It's rehumanizing the people who've been devalued for hundreds of years. You've had a lot of people, you know, tell you, try to tell you who you are, but what are the biggest misconceptions when it comes to Black Lives Matter? Oh my goodness, so many. So <laughs> <laughs> I know I know you could break it down for us. Yeah, you know, and 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 it's important for people to understand this and and for your audience in particular. You know, when a movement or a group of people or an individual is at the center of a misinformation and disinformation campaign, then something more is happening. Mm. So many things that are on the internet are just n simply not true about BLM. Number one, George Soros has never funded us, literally. Okay, um, you heard it here. <laughs> he's never funded us. Um, and that was one of the first, you know, sort of moments of disinformation that I experienced. I just remember being like, 
you know, the internet swirling with George Soros is behind BLM. And I was like, really? Like, and that to me is intense because what that's saying is that people don't believe that black women can be powerful, mm. that people wanted to discredit what we have done and really wanted to say there's a white man behind what's happening inside of BLM. And it's just not true. Mm. It's us. It's, it's us. The other misinformation campaign has been that Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization. <laughs> and I chuckle because it's so ridiculous. You know, BLM is a civil rights organization. We always have been and we always will be. Um, we're a civil rights organization and we have been at the forefront of challenging how Black, Black people in particular have been seen inside of this country, and I also argue around the globe. I wanna rewind a little bit. You grew up in San Fernando Valley in California, and you became an activist early in life. What, what caused you to get involved at such a young age? I actually have four generations from Los Angeles. My great-grandmother migrated here from Oklahoma because she was fleeing the KKK. Mm. It was too scary, too dangerous for her. And so she moved to Los Angeles and she raised her, her son and then her son raised my mother and then my mother raised us. And I witnessed a significant amount of over-policing. Um, it was pretty much the central social, social service in my community it was the police and it was incarceration. Those early age experiences really shaped me into the activist that I am today. So you have a docu-series called Resist, and it's about the grassroots organization that you started called Justice LA. Yes. And everybody that's listening or watching, you guys have to go to YouTube and check this out. The episodes are like in anywhere between like eight and 10 minutes long. They're bite-sized, so like if you have a, you know, if you have ADD like me, you can handle it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But I, I think it's really powerful how you gave the viewers just like a firsthand look into what goes into being an activist and really being on the front lines. And so what do you hope the viewers are taking away from your docu-series Resist? We really wanted people to understand that activism wasn't just going to protests. Um, we needed people to get that, like I get it, the news media is obsessed with the protests, you know, right. they want to focus on the sort of like the most exciting part. But a lot of what we're doing is like having meetings, being in conversations, developing strategy, trying to figure out what's the best, you know, next step forward, you know, trying to figure out who's the elected official that's going to support us. So I really wanted people to see the, the, you know, the background of what we do every single day, you know, during the series, and in and, 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 and true, you know, awful fashion, the police killed somebody, you know, that during the series. And so you see the story of Juan Correa. Mm -hmm. um, obviously when you lose a child and you know, you and I as mothers, like the, even the thought, like, I just can't, I can't even think, think about that. And so like meeting all these parents who have experienced this terrible loss and then for a long time didn't have support or community. And who have never had justice, never. Never ever have had justice. And now, you know, there's these movements that are, that they can be inside of to give them justice. I wanted, I wanted people to see that. I wanted people to see what it takes and the kind of labor and the, and how long it takes. I was just gonna ask, I was like, what happened? What was the outcome? We won. Um, a year so, later. So wait, so because it was two <laughs> jails that were going to open. Yes. And one of them was a mental health jail, and yep. then the other one was just like you know regular old run of the mill jail because you know <laughs> they love to collect our money in these jails. Exactly. And this is what, what I'm saying for people like, it's not a single protest that stops that. It's years and mm. years. Before. We have been fighting a back those jails for 12 years. 12 years. I am, I mean, my producer and I were talking, we were like, the jails probably got built because there was like billions of dollars, you know, within those jails. So I'm like, Matt, did you hear that? 
so excited. I just need folks to understand yeah. because People don't realize that the organizing we're doing is actually changing the world. It is, it's changing the world. It really, truly is. I do believe that um, it's a, a it's a kind of a, an awakening moment for folks. To hear the whole conversation, make sure you listen to Pretty Big Deal wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you. And a special thank you to Flamingo for hydrating my newly shaven leg because I just I just shaved it for the first time in a long time <laughs> it's nice and smooth and now it's shiny because of the lotion <laughs> I learned so much from talking to Patrice today what a powerful and meaningful conversation thank you Patrice for coming on and if you'd like to listen to the full episode you can go to pretty big deal wherever you listen to podcasts to hear the full conversation, click the link below.